Let's see, maybe there's some volume. Hey, there's some volume or something here. Does that help at all? Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. That helps a little. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. And I can maybe I can turn it just a little bit now. Does that help? Yeah, this helps. Okay. Yeah, this okay. is much better. Lasse Lars Lunde Lundeberg. Yeah, yes, yeah, Lars Lundeberg. Lasse is a Lars. nickname. Yeah. Okay. And so I should should I call you Lasse or Lars? Mm. I think <laughs> Lars is easier okay. in, in English. Okay. And um, Lasse isn't that a nickname for a girlfriend in Scottish or something? Or <laughs> yeah, Lassie, the, <laughs> Lassie. the dog. Yeah. I'm trying to stay away from Lassie. <laughs> so Lars. No big deal. Yeah. yeah, everybody knows Lars is a good, good masculine. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. And um, oh, interesting. You've worked in the U.S. in radio. Yeah. They couldn't find anybody else. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Where in so the U.S. did you work? Uh, in California, in Ridgecrest. Uh, it's a small desert town. Close to China. LA? Yeah, about one hour, or well, maybe two hours north of LA. Palm, Palm uh, no, it's it's inland. It's in the desert. So, 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 what topics would you like to talk about? You've heard some of the things I brought up with Rick. I'd like to, I'd like to go over some of that same territory again, yeah. if you're, if you're up for Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of, in, I get interested in modernism. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You know the culture, uh, the culture war between modernism and uh, uh -huh. you know, conservative people coming here from the Middle East. Okay. I had a pen. I don't know what happened to it. It's going away. Oh, here. Um, so the culture wars. Yeah, because uh, where I live now, we have a large immigrant community, mm -hmm. and for the last maybe ten years, I've been kind of learning about. We got some national nationalistic movements in Sweden, yeah. Swedes, of course, but then the immigrants coming from older cultures, they have a lot in common with some of the nationalistic movements all over Europe, mm -hmm. in America. But then you got the modernistic world, of course. So I'm kind of fascinated in trying to understand those and, things. And you've lived in the United States. You've yeah. lived in the United States for over right. a decade. And you've right. also, and you're a Swede. Right. And so I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts on our social welfare programs versus the Swedish social welfare programs. Right. And how yeah. they've worked for this country throughout your lifetime. Right. And where they're going. And yeah. And yeah. So we can talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. Give definitely. a comparative analysis yeah. from somebody who's yeah. actually been in both places. <laughs> yeah. Which is okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, um, Lundeberg. Yeah, Lundeberg. Yeah. yeah. Lundeberg. Men så brett också du startade i allt en två radiostationer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The biggest, the biggest political topic in Sweden. If you ask me, I have an answer. If you ask some other, they what have other. What, what, what do you think it is? I think this um, about uh, um, yeah, it is. That's why you internet and uh, the uh, printing press. You, mm -hmm. you have to compare internet like the printing press, Gutenberg. Karen Milkovich? You can only use Gagarin. Gagarin. Or oh, whatever. Use whatever. What, what, what okay. you think it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't hear people so much talk about uh, the process. I want to thank you on the air. Uh, at, uh, at the beginning, uh, for 500 yeah. years ago, yes, uh, the people in power don't like printing press. Right. And the same thing is happen again. Yeah. What are they scared about? Yeah. Okay, power, but yeah. what? What's wrong with it? With yeah. more information? Yeah. How's that? We've been arresting. I think you, you, you and Tom have to have to talk much more about it on your shows. Tom talk, talk about some time, but mm -hmm. you have to print imprint it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you should do it, but you have yeah. to find out. Yeah. But. It, but if you compare with printing press, I think people a little bit more understand uh, how important it is. Now you think it is something that children do. If the sopa get through, if they could cut Tom from air. Yeah, we talk about sopa a lot. 
we talk about it probably we have a lot of guests on it about the TV show as well. Yeah. And they had changed changed the name on it to open. It was. Yeah, they, it it does called soap, but it, it called it, the new name is open. Yeah, I know. It sounds much the good. So if I see if I'm doing other things while you're talking, just keep on talking. <laughs> That's true. Doesn't they learn anything from fa for uh, older failures? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, when they're naming things. We constantly talk to them, to the Democrats, about how they name things. And welcome back to a very jet lagged Tom Hartman here, broadcasting live from Stockholm, Sweden. And actually, uh, the suburb of Naka, Radio Naka, 99.9 .9 megahertz, simulcasting our signal in Stockholm and surrounding areas in Naka and whatnot. And special thanks to Gagarin Milkovic, who's, who's uh, helping organize all this, and, and our friends at Silver Lake Audio in the United States, who are helping organize the audio, and, and, uh, and everybody else. It's just uh, fascinating. And I wanted to bring in, in this hour, we're, we're going to get back to American politics as well at the bottom of the hour. And, and, and so if you have calls or thoughts on, you know, where this is all going with Newt and all these kinds of things, just stick around. But, but um, for, for a little bit, being here, uh, Sweden is the epicenter of so many things. And uh, I, I think of Sweden and Iceland as the economic epicenters of, of you know, what's going on, um, frankly, worldwide over the short and long term. And, and cultural changes as well. And uh, Lars Lindeberg is with us. Lars is uh, a, a commentator on Swedish and American politics. He's on radio here, Radio Lars, in fact, .com is his website. Uh, but he also lived in the United States for over a decade with a green card and worked there in radio and, radio and television. And so has the, the, the extraordinary and unique, unique ability to, uh, as a journalist and talk show host, and commentator and, and resident of both countries to have some thoughts on them. And uh, Lars, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So, um, so very pleased to have you with us. Um, first of all, you said that you've been spending a lot of time looking at the culture wars, um, both here in Sweden and and in the United States. You saw this, and, and the, the the right and the racists and the the, the xenophobes and. Yeah, uh, what's going on here? What's going on, in, you know, in the rest of Europe, and and how does it relate to what's going on in America? Oh, that's what I'm trying to understand. Uh, well, Sweden is a very modern country I mean, when it comes to social things. With very it's modern. Very modern, yeah, extremely modern. America, of course, is more uh, traditional or conservative. Um, but now, how, if I may, just right. push back on that. Um, it seems to me that Sweden, a lot of Swedes are, you know, they're very reserved. This is the way we always did it. I, mean, I lived in, in Germany for a year in the 80s, and I was astounded at how often the answer to any question was, we've always done it this way. And I've certainly heard that in Sweden. And, and there's, you know, systems, uh, you know, we make change incremental and slow. So how would you, would you say it's modern because it's technologically modern? Well, I'd say it's very collective. We're used to, the old uh, culture of Sweden is, Everybody is following everybody, so everybody has to do the same. We're you all know? in it together. Yeah, it, it's the flip side of equality that everybody has to act the same, stay the, the same, and live the same, mm -hmm. and being ruled, and everybody follows. I guess Germany is very much like that, mm -hmm. uh, which of course can be a bad thing. Uh, but this changes very quickly now because we got a lot of immigration coming in, people from other cultures, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the reason for Sweden being very m modern, I think, uh, is because it's been ruled that way. You know, our leaders have been wanting it to be very modern. Mm -hmm. And um, and, the, and, the, and and if the leaders are elected by the people, I mean, you have a king here, but uh, yeah, not not so much. Um, so your leaders are the politicians, and so they're reflecting the will of the people. Uh, or are they bought off by the billionaires? Yeah, hey. <laughs> That's an idea. Yeah, which, yeah. Is it? Which, which is it? Is it is it really that they're uh, reflecting the will of the people? Not really. It's uh, you know in America you got lobbyists mm -hmm. here. Uh, the ruling people of Sweden, you know the people in power and the richest people, 
a very, <coughs> very good hold of the politicians. Mm. But the funny thing about Sweden is you don't talk much about that. It's not something uh, that's been talked about or whatever. I can give you a quick example. The tax laws of Sweden maybe a couple of decades ago made a, a poor little uh, carpenter. He had hired a subcontractor and the subcontractor didn't have his paper in order so this carpenter ha had to pay a lot of taxes and almost got wiped out of business because the tax laws told him you, you're responsible for the people you hire. Sure. But to make a long story short, so this was an outrage. Some, uh, some uh, papers were read up and it was an outrage and then the Minister of Finance said, okay, come into my office. And this carpenter came into the fi Minister of Finance office and the Minister of Finance called the tax authorities, the IRS, and fixed it. Wow. And, and everybody said, hey, that's a good thing. But of course, that's terrible. I mean, the, the ministers shouldn't go in and rule in, in particular yeah. small cases, and no. there are like thousands of other problems. Yeah, if you have problems well. that are systemic, they should be fixed systemically. Yeah, by the law. That's, yes. that's a good idea. Of course, our king is above the law, technically, so the king of Sweden doesn't have to follow the law. Yeah. So, the good thing about Sweden is, Everybody's very peaceful, people don't riot and fight, but everybody follows what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. what the leaders tell you to do. So it's right for being run for, by the, the big guys. So yeah. Which yeah. is so the downside. So the little guys, the yeah. immigrants, the people people who are not who are visibly not ancestrally Swedish, right. know, people of color, right. people who maybe are third or fourth generation even immigrants, but they're people of color. Right. There, uh, there's a there's a, a, a political party here that would like them all kicked out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Pat Buchanan in the United States, a right wing American commentator, I remember hearing a speech when he was running for president some 15 years or more ago, um, where he was basically talking about those people in the banking, which was uh, obvious Buchanan code for for the Jews and those people who are on welfare, which was obvious Buchanan code for, for African Americans, even though more white people are on welfare than African Americans in the United States. Um, and he just lost a big job because he, he wrote a book in which he has a chapter called The End of White America. Oh, the last and book, too. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, you know, we have this in the United States. You have this here. Um, how's it doing here? What's the situation with this xenophobia, racism, whatever you call it? Uh, well, it's I guess it started out, you know, back after World War II, there were a bunch of ne uh, Nazis, or neo-Nazis, hanging on and building, but well, they were really small, mm -hmm. but they kind of formed and built sort of an anti-immigrant party, but their basis is also conservatism or against modernism, they're really against the, the modernistic society. So they're true modernism. conservatives in the Edmund Burke sense. Yeah, I think so. Keep society the way it was when Dickens was around. Yeah, yeah. Interesting though, a lot of immigrants also are very conservative. A lot of immigrants, especially, I talked to a lot of Muslims who are, uh, they're split, but a lot of them are against the modern society. In other words, they Although don't, they, 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 they think that something like gay marriage is a bad idea. Exactly, yeah. yes, okay. yes. So. so, and then of course, but, but not all, there's a lot, a lot of uh, Muslims coming here want to emulate the, the Western world, but some don't. Uh -huh. uh, so there's a struggle going on. Uh, so yeah, that's the old sort of called neo-Nazi um, movement that you've seen all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, uh, but then they have changed. Then, then they're split into two parts because usually the neo-Nazis they hate the Jews because they think the Jews is the root of all evil in the whole world, and uh, the racist. You know, they really believe in race, literally, not just like a slur, but yeah. race is everything. But the new anti-immigrant uh, parties of Sweden and uh, Denmark and some European countries, they don't talk about race. They're actually literally not racist. It's not just that they're planning they're trying to play nice. No, they're not racist. And they don't hate the Jews. So it's like a huge split in, in that so movement. So what are they, classes? Or um, what's classes? Classes. Well, they're more. They're still sort of conservative, uh -huh. but not as conservative as. So they just want to throw society back 70 years, that's all. That's a good point, yeah, because the Social Democrats ran Sweden for forever, for many, many years. That's, yeah. that's been the biggest party. And uh, the anti-immigrant party that got into the Swedish parliament recently, Sverige Demokraterna, they're like the Social Democrats were in like the 70s, the 60s or 70s. Yeah. 
and the uh, neo Nazis, they're like the Social Democrats who are in like the 30s and 40s. Fascinating. So both want to get go back. So in 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 our last hour, we had <laughs> we had a representative of the Pirate Party. This oh yeah, is, uh, you know, yeah, which is kind yeah. of the other end. This is fascinating. And I, I, I and I'd like to get into with you a conversation, <laughs> Lars, about the the whole situation with social democracies. What does it mean to be a democratic socialist in Sweden, or, or words to that effect? In, right after this break. Okay. <laughs> Tom Herman here broadcasting live from Stockholm, Sweden. Our guest Lars Lunderberg, and uh, more with him, and then we'll be picking up your calls and back to American politics. Yep. I just, just remembered. And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you, and Lars Lunderberg is with me. And uh, Lars... Uh, the the uh, the situation. Let, uh, we, we just take this this uh, immigrant situation just a little bit further because I am not just sure that I really understood what you just said. Okay, about the two split. split. Yeah, yeah, about the split. Okay, okay. The, you know, I understand the people who are the racists. You know, we right. everybody knows. Right. You know, and and somebody, yeah, and yeah. the anti yeah. Everybody yeah. Yeah. knows that, or they've read about it, or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we've certainly seen the consequences of it writ large with World War Two, and and, right. and yeah. arguably. Uh, forever, nations invading other nations and, and right. killing people. But the people who are aligning themselves with them and call themselves conservatives, what do they really want? Are you talking about the uh, the, the second immigrant no. wave, or no? I mean the second, the second anti, the the second group of Swedes who are aligning themselves with the races, but they're not really racist. Oh, okay. They're basically against uh, Muslims. It used to be that the only Nazis, so they're religious. Yes. Pardon my interview. Mm, yeah, maybe. Or maybe it's against... Well, yeah, that, that's... Just, yeah, in a way. But, uh, no, they... they First, they don't... They're, they're, they're not racist. They, they're not anti-Semite anymore. They're actually Zionist and pro-Israel. So that's a huge shift. You're talking, mm. you know, anti or for uh, Jewish, the Jewish state or anti or for uh, race. So mm. it's a really big shift. Uh, but anyway... Instead of just hate all immigrants, now they hate Islam and Muslims the most, and they they welcome Christian immigrants for especially from countries where, where Muslims and Christians have been at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. So they kind of welcome people coming in who also hate Muslims who are from other countries. Uh, I'm talking about the new the the party that got into the Swedish. Uh, g um, Parliament recently with something like, I don't know, five, six percent of the votes or whatever. Uh, Sverige Demokraterna, the Swedish, the Sweden Democrats, mm -hmm. which is the basic, uh, the basic group. And the other part, the, the, the true neo-Nazis, they're more left out in the cold. They're still there, but they're very few. I think their party, the biggest party, got something like 1,200 votes in the last election. Mm. Sweden has something like 9 million people. Um, so there's not much there. There's not much there, but uh, I, you know, I started following these these guys from maybe nine years ago. I read everything on the internet, and I subscribe to one of their newsletters, and I try to understand everything about them. And I thought I should grow tired of that story for you know after three or four years. But it's fascinating to watch a group that sees yourself, or you see society from an, from the outside. I, I, grew, I was born and raised in Sweden, I lived for 10 years in the States, which means I was the United States from the outside, and I was there for 10 or 12 years, and I started to see Sweden from the outside. So it's really, it's really fascinating to, to, to learn and watch how other people see your thing. Mm -hmm. And I used to work, I spent all my time working on radio and TV with a lot of journalists, and the neo Nazis, well both anti-immigrant groups, they really hate journalists. So mm -hmm. I, get, I get their view on the media and on everything. Also, Sweden used to have a really strong communist or really leftist part, uh, parties, several of them. And some of those ideas from the old left, from like the 50s and 60s, I mean all the way from the 30s and the 50s and 60s, are now being taken over by those neo-Nazis. And mm -hmm. what, I, what I sense in my, you know, my nose is picking up, I think those, those neo-Nazis are going to grow, and I think a lot of the militant Muslims are going to grow, and they have some things in common, the hate, well, they hate the Jews, okay. and they hate moder that modernity. We are to take a break. Oops, I forgot to put the MP 
PC so now I'm not to keep that good. Give me a second. Yeah. Anyway, we're back on the map. Welcome back, Tom Hartman here with you, broadcasting live from Radio Naka, 99.9 .9 FM in Stockholm, or Naka, suburban Stockholm. And uh, Gagarin Milkovich and, and all the good people here, Karen, thank you all for all your help and, 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 and everything that you're doing. We're, we're so pleased to be here. And, uh, and to the good folks at Solar Lake Audio for helping make all this happen. So, uh, with me in the studio is Lars Lundeberg. Who uh, has this unique perspective as somebody who has uh, lived in the United States for over a decade, worked in the United States, and and is a Swedish commentator, a Swedish essentially talk show host and commentator and and journalist. Uh, RadioLars.com, his website. And Lars, just to summarize the conversation from the last segment, you said that the thing that this new group that has emerged, which is called the Swedish Democratic Party, but how do you say it in Swedish? Sverige Demokraterna. Aha. Sverige Demokraterna. Yeah, close yeah. enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that this this party is uh, they're not they're, they're not racists and they're not anti-Semites and they're not friends with the Nazis right. on those bases, but they are aligning themselves with the Nazis because they hate Muslims, and it's yeah. their hatred it's their hatred of Muslims, and then the other guys hate. Um, Jews and people of color, right. and so the two of them are getting together and saying, we're the people who hate people. <laughs> right? I find that incredible. Now, with regard to the United States yeah. and, and Sweden, right. Sweden is world famous for being a, uh, a social democracy, right. uh, yeah. a democratic socialist society, a society where from, from the moment you are born, arguably from the moment a woman is, is pregnant, until the moment you die, you never have to fear that some disaster, whether it's a car accident that disables you, or cancer, or uh, you know whatever it may, or being born with a with a with a with a uh, with some sort of a birth defect or something like that, you never have to worry that having that happen is going to wipe you out. In America, half of all bankruptcies happen from people who who simply got sick, right. and half of those people were insured, yeah. and they still wiped them out. Yeah. And then fully a third of bankruptcies in America are the result of women getting divorced and they don't have an independent income high enough to cover the bills that they have, the, the, the half of the bills that they walked out of the divorce with. None of that would ever happen here in Sweden. So what, what lessons does Sweden have for America? And how do the Swedes think about this? You know, how, but looking at us, how do they, what, do they think we're crazy or do they think that we're maybe onto something or, you know, what? When, you, when you're uh, born and raised with something, you don't appreciate it. So a lot of people just take it for granted, just like Rick said. Mm -hmm. uh, also, what I discovered or experienced in America was that life could change more quickly and you had to be really responsible for your own life. So the good thing is that you feel that you're alive more because mm -hmm. you constantly have to... And also money. I, we can understand why uh, Americans think so much, about, uh, so much about the dollar. Well, of course, you got to have those dollars, otherwise you're on the street. Yeah. And I imagine myself being on the streets, you know, a couple of weeks after the next paycheck. So I could have that. I felt that feeling myself when you were in America. Yeah, when I was in America, although it never happened, but I, you know, I could feel that feeling. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have to choose between, you know, paying the rent or buying uh, cans of food or whatever. Um, and so when you don't have that, when you don't have that, you you can. Well, sometimes maybe you don't live as close to reality, or maybe you start dreaming away. Mm -hmm. Which is a good thing, because the thing about America is that everything is much tactical. You're more focused on the small, nitty-gritty details in the moment. Uh, and the good thing, the best thing about maybe Sweden is that, and have some people coming from Russia, is that you have this luxury, in a way, of thinking the big thoughts. Mm -hmm. but, you, but you can't change your life that mm. much. It used to be if you work real hard, you got to taxes, you couldn't really, you didn't get in much more money, although that's changed a little. Um, but Sweden doesn't doesn't have as many millionaires and billionaires relative to its population right, as most right. other countries. In fact, you only have a handful. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and and you don't have poor people here. I mean, desperately poor people. No, n not that much. No. So uh, in a way, the bad thing is you don't feel that you can change your life. You don't feel that you're so in everybody's life. stuck in the middle of life. Yeah. In a way, I mean, <laughs> that's I'm I'm not trashing. I think it's very good. Yeah. 
And I think, of course, just like anybody can call the cops or the fire department, no matter how many times you, you burglarize, you mm -hmm. should be able to go to get medical care no matter what, I, th yeah. I think. Of course, there's a problem because good medical care is about how you live your life, what you eat, if you exercise, and you don't really want the government to tell you you know, what to eat or how to live but your life. So that's a, there's but, a problem. But with everybody paying for it, isn't there a social pressure uh, not to smoke, not to become obese, not to, you know... Yeah, a little bit. There, there was a Swedish talk show who brought, brought that up. A lot of, some callers called in and said that way. If they eat, and, you know, mm -hmm. eat fatty, fatty foods and drink, it's their problem. We shouldn't be paying for it. But basically, it doesn't really, doesn't really work that way. People just expect the government to be there. There's very much a, a, a sense here that we're all in this together. We're all Swedes. We take yeah. care of each other. I am my brother's keeper. Which sounds very good, but I gotta say, there's a downside to it because mm -hmm. it went back to Sweden. In Sweden, everybody has to be the same. Those those immigrant immigrant parties I talked about, mm -hmm. they're reflecting Sweden a few decades back, mm -hmm. where everybody had to be the same. Yeah. And of course, people coming in from other culture cultures, they're different. So th that there's th there's a lot of things happening. People coming in with new cultures, different cultures, right. and people here have to adjust, and they have to adjust, so there are a lot of things going on, and I hope it's for the better, I hope it's not a, you know, powder cake, whatever. Is the, is the, in the minute we have left, is the, Im the immigrants, is this the result of being part of the European Union, it's easier to get into and out of Sweden if you're from another EU country? I think it's basically the result of the Swedish politicians p uh, pushing it that way, EU or not EU. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what, and I think Swedish politicians have get, have started looking more towards America. We're becoming more and more like America, actually, the modern sense, all the modern stuff. And yeah. Of course, America being an immigrant. Yeah, I, except that you, there, there's no way that you would have a political party have as a platform, uh, you know, <laughs> do away with Obamacare, you know, which is just the smallest step toward a national health care system, you know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just uh, yeah, or, or you know, do uh, privatize Social Security. George Bush ran, you know, he in 2005 yeah. when he was reelected, his first priority was to take Social Security and hand it all to Wall Street. I, I don't think anybody in Sweden would do that. No, it's not. well, the big banks and the big guys. <laughs> they they, 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 they still run the show over here. Actually, they, actually, Goldman Sachs is in here too. So. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> but Lars Lindberg, <laughs> thanks so much, Lars. Thank okay, you. they're still open. We'll be back in just a minute, Tom Harvin here with you. So, is is all this a criticism of Mitt Romney actually going to help him come November? Your thoughts next. Okay, let's see what we have here. I had a couple of questions also for Sweden. Swedes. Does yeah, does Sweden have a made in Sweden law? No? I didn't really understand that question. I made it, is that like protectionism or what? Are we yeah, talking about? Uh, domestic content. Is is there a certain amount of the manufactured goods in the country have to be made here, or if the government buys things, uh, they have to be made here? Well, I can say we used well. We we're less than that. It used to be more like that before. Like we were, the borders were really mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Now we open up to the to the European yeah. Union a lot. Yeah. So nowadays it doesn't exist that much. But you still have industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I bought a pair of fingernail clippers today here, and they were made in Sweden. You couldn't right. find a pair of fingernail clippers in America. <laughs> made in They're all made in China. Oh, yeah. Everything, everything is yeah. made in China. But see, we have we have Volvo, the two big car companies, and they've been sold to GM and to Ford. Yeah. And lately, the, Swe the, the running Swedish uh, government are selling Saab to or giving so Saab away to to China. Yeah. And they're really they're almost libertarian in their ways. The, the government we have right now. They right. still don't want to lose... Uh, it's a conservative government. Yeah. yeah. But not culturally conservative. Right. But they are... Uh, economically. Sort of libertarian. Uh, well, in a way. They, they still want to keep the social yeah. safety net. Yeah. Um, I kind of like Ron Paul, you know, for, for telling the truth, even though he's crazy about libertarian <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but does somebody actually speak saying those things? How yeah. come... He's the only one. Yeah. I mean, well... Yeah. Okay, well, I think I can I can probably answer that then um, with what you said, and then I, and then I've got to get back to this oh, okay. stuff, otherwise yeah. I'll be in okay. big, big radio trouble. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so Lars, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. You're a, a marvelous guest. <laughs> Pleasure talking yeah. with you. Maybe I'll plug this. You don't get it. No, no, you just leave everything okay. as okay. it is right now. Okay. Everything no. equalized. Can I okay. Right down here? Sure. You got power for your.